Hi everyone, welcome to the further trigonometry topic as part of National 5 Maths. What we're going to look at today is trigonometric graphs. I'm just going to do a quick introduction. What I want you to be able to take out of this video is being able to sketch your graphs of sin x, cos x and tan x. Being able to describe those graphs in terms of the amplitude and the period. Also where it cuts the axes and the maximum and minimum values. And also to be able to sketch and identify graphs where we put a number in front of it, like y equals a sin x or y equals a cos x, etc. Okay, now, first thing we're going to look at is just a quick investigation to do with sin x. Now, if I give x these values, 0, 91, 82, 73, 60, just working through my circle, see what happens to sin as we go around. Okay, so if x is 0, sin x equals 0 as well, or sin of 0 is 0. If x is 90, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 180 is 0, sine of 270 is negative 1, sine of 360 is 0. Okay, you can use your calculator to check those values. Now, you can see what's happening there. It doesn't just go like a times table, it gets higher and higher and higher. It's actually going up and then it's come back down and then it's going back up again. So, at 0, it's at 0, at 90 it's up at 1, at 180 it's back at 0. 270 is a negative one, and then at 360 is back at zero. Now that is the basic shape of a sine graph. Now I've cheated a little bit, I've not given you every value, I've not gone 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 90, I've just looked at the extremities. Now what your sine graph actually looks like, it's more of a curve. That's not a very good drawing at all, but you get the general idea, and I'll show you what it really looks like in a minute. Now that's going to be one high and negative one low. I just want to emphasise as well that we're only looking at a small part of the sine graph here, it's not the whole thing. We're only looking between 0 and 360. Okay, now what's actually happening is, just like all of our other graphs are straight lines, are parabolas, and it, it goes on and on and on and on and on. So here's the sine graph here, as it actually should look with a neat, neat, nice neat curve. If I zoom out there, you can see that that curve just carries on and on and on and on. Okay. Well, what we do for practical reasons to show that we understand it and to show that we understand what's going on, we just look at it between 0 and 360 or any, just a smaller range. Now that's the sine graph. The cos graph looks slightly different. Doing the same process, it gives you a graph that looks like that. Starting at 1 this time rather than 0, going down to negative 1 at the midpoint and then up back up to 1. And the tan graph looks slightly different. It goes right the way up then starts again down at 90, goes right the way up, and then starts again down at 270. Now, it will never ever reach 90 degrees. As it goes up, it will go up and up and up there, but it will never touch 90. It will go up to 89.9999999, and then it will flip to 90.0000001, and it will be the same down there. It will never ever touch 90, and the same with 270. It will rise higher and higher there and then it'll just appear on the other side there and we call that asymptotes you don't need to know that don't worry okay so that is the sine graph the cos graph and the tan graph now if you can copy this bit down as your note okay that's that i'll just talk you through this briefly while you're doing that that's your sine graph there now it has an amplitude of one that means it goes one high and it goes one low Okay, so you can see in the graph there, 1 and negative 1, it's got a period of 360. That means that after 360 degrees, that is when it will start repeating, and you've seen that in the graph before. It cuts the x-axis at 0, 180, and 360, and it cuts the y-axis at 0 as well. Okay, your maximum value is here, at 91, and your minimum value is at 270, minus 1. Okay, the cos graph, there's a shape of it there. Very similar kind of things going on between the cos and the sine. These are the two that gets examined in terms of graph much more often because they have the maximum and the minimum value. It's got an amplitude of 1, it goes 1 and minus 1. A period of 360, after 360 degrees it will start repeating. It cuts the y axis, x axis is 90 and 270, and it cuts the y axis at 1. It's got the maximum at 1 and 0, 360. Sorry, 361, rubbish. And it's got the minimum value down at the, the, the bottom there at 180, negative 1. Now your tan graph has an infinite amplitude because it just goes up and up and up and never actually touches 90 degrees. 
it's got a period of 180 because if you notice that bit there is exactly the same shape as that one there so it actually starts repeating after 180 degrees this one and it cuts the x-axis as 0 180 and 360 and it cuts the y-axis to zero as well. You know, as I say, that tan one is, is not examined nearly as much as the sign in the cos one because of that uh, that amplitude being infinite. Okay, can you make sure you've got that stuff down on your notes and we will move on. Okay, now we've got the basic shape. We're going to start manipulating it and start moving numbers around it and seeing what happens when we do things to these sine, cos and tan graphs. Now, what we'll do is we'll look again at the, the sine graph, but this time I'm going to take that sine graph, then I'm going to multiply it by 2. Okay, so if the sine graph is 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, if I'm doing two lots of that, two zeros will give me 0 still, two ones will give me 2, two zeros, 0, two twos give me minus 2, and two zeros will give me 0. Okay, so if my sine graph like that between 1 and minus 1. If I were to do 2 sin x, it's still going to cut the same zeros, but this time it's going to be twice as high. It's going to go up to 2, down to negative 2, and back to the start. So it'll be 2 and negative 2 this time. Okay, you could pause the video and try and do a quick sketch of 5 sin x, see if you've got that really quickly. Okay, so. 5 sin x is still going to be 0, 0, and 0. Okay, because when you multiply that 0 at the start by 5, it's still going to be 0. But this time, these ones are going to be 5 and minus 5. So it's going to be the same shape graph. But this time, actually, that was a bit better, wasn't it? It's going to be 5 and minus 5. Okay, so that's what's happening when we multiply one of these graphs, sin, cos, or tan. It's going to stretch up and down the way by the factor that's at the front. Now, as a general case, as a general case, it's still going to have the same shape. It's still going to cut the, the x-axis in the same place at 360 and 180. But for the graph y equals a sine x, whatever that number is at the front, whatever that number is there, is how high and how low it's going to go. Now, that there is your general rule. Okay, now can you add this bit into your note? Just this bit is fine. Okay, and obviously the cos and the tan work exactly the same way. It's just they're going to be a different shaped graph. Okay, now here's some examples. I'm going to sketch these three graphs for sin x, 10 cos x, and minus 3 sin x. And then identify those functions. And then I'll leave you a couple of examples, and that'll be us. Okay, so. I'm going to sketch a graph of y equals 4 sine x, so firstly we need our axis. Now it's a sine graph, so it starts at 0, goes up, down and back up. Okay, that's 360, that's 180. The amplitude is normally 1 and minus 1, but this time because it's 4 sine x it's going to be 4 and minus 4. Okay, now it's a little bit messy with those x intercepts. Uh, don't worry about it, I hope you get the idea. With the cos x graph. Okay, this time we've got a cos graph, so it's not starting at 0, it's starting at 1. Okay, and it's coming down. Nothing's going to change about the basic shape of my graph. It's still going to cut it at 90 and 270. But this time, because of this 10, instead of having an amplitude of 1, it's going to have an amplitude of 10, and it's going to go from 10 to negative 10. Now see, a little bit trickier, not quite much. Okay, this time we've got a negative in front. Now what's going to happen there is instead of going up to 1 or going up to 3, because you're taking it to negative 3, the first thing that sign's going to do is going to go down to negative 3. Okay, so it's going to come down here first. Then it's going to go back up. And then it's going to go up to 3 instead of down to negative 3 and come back to 0. So it's the same shape, but because you're multiplying it by a negative, everything's going to flip upside down, and you're going to go 3 to negative 3. Okay, now, in the second number 1 I've got there, 
let's call it number two. Uh, we're going to identify the volume functions. So that first one there, we've got a cost graph. Cost graph should be one high. This isn't one high, it's five high, so it's going to be five cost x. B, okay, it's not a number, but it's P. So that's a sine graph. So that there is going to be P sine x. And the last one is upside down, so it's got to be a negative. That's still a sine function. It's 8 and minus 8, so it's going to be y is equal to minus 8 sine x. Okay, that would be good to, to have as an example in your notes. And the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to give you a bronze, silver, gold question for sketching and identifying the graphs. What you should be doing for your teacher is taking uh, at least bronze, if not bronze, silver and gold, work up as far as you can. Can you sketch each graph and identify each function and then the teacher will go over that to start off this lesson when you get in. Okay, thank you very much.